Hello, Dan Matichuk here again. And uh, I'm just putzing around down here today. I'm not feeling too good. A bit of the flu. But uh, I wanted to show you uh, one thing. I'm, I'm basically doing all the little things that I, that I know I need to do to get down here to be ready to, to start actually making things. I'm trying to catch up. And uh, I had to make uh, plugs for the peoples. Because uh, when I bought the kiln, um, she only had one. She had taken them, and uh, she was using them for her new uh, kiln. So uh, she gave me some uh, refractory, some uh, like the castable refractory that the kiln is lined with. Or not castable; it's like pressed, I guess. But uh, basically, it's like a rigid castable. Uh, that they, they press into the forms. Um, what I did to make the, the plugs is uh, I used uh, a homebrew castable refractory that actually works quite well. And I want to share that with you. You may already know this. You may have already seen this. Uh, maybe if you uh, have ever done any metal casting, you know about it. Uh, but the furnace that I made which is in a sh everything's in a shambles right now with tools and everything everywhere, but um, it's made out of it. The it's lined actually with it. And this is the uh, pith, I believe it's called, which sits in the bottom of the furnace down there. There's, an, there's one down in there now. And the, uh, the steel crucible I use sits on top of this. This is the original one that I made out of the homemade refractory. And uh, this one has been fired dozens of times. Uh, no cracks. The furnace actually held up really well. It is actually lined with fire brick, but um, it's actually holding up very well. The top has a, a little gap around, but no, no real cracks. That's normal. It shrinks away. And what that is, is uh, one part uh, furnace cement, two parts perlite, uh, one part sand, and about a half a part give or take of water and you want to use as little water as possible obviously and it's a real thick mixture kind of sticky you, you just uh, mix it up and press it into whatever your uh, uh, you know form you have and in this case it was it's sheet metal and I used a cardboard ring on the inside but getting back to the the peoples I used a, a similar uh, mixture uh, this refractory cement comes in these little tubs uh, there's basically two kinds or two uh, like strengths if you if you want to call it that. This one is a, is a regular. It goes up to uh, about 2,500 degrees as is, and the other stuff goes up to 3,000. And the other stuff is black, which I've never been able to find it, but they tell me it's out there. Or I've heard it, that it's out there. I'm sure you'd have to you can find it if you look for it. Um, but I'm doing. Uh, low and mid fire so I'm sure this is going to be more than adequate. I've, melt, I've melted copper uh, aluminum like I say dozens of times and copper a few times actually overheated copper a few times in that furnace with no meltdown so it's, it's pretty good stuff. Uh, the perlite I don't know if you're, if you're familiar with that it just comes in these bags uh, real, real lightweight yeah. white almost like uh, crumbled up uh, sour foam is what it's like and uh, you just mix the two of those together and you can press it into a form um, again it's on if I mentioned it's two parts perlite to one part of the refractory cement for simple little things if you know if you're um, uh, like the plugs is a good example uh, it's also good that way for repairs uh, on uh, like the bottom of, a, of my little test kiln, in fact, I'll show you actually. See in there, I packed it in the bottom. My little test kiln. And, uh, so get ready to wire in my, my big kiln here. It still isn't wired in. But anyway, these are the little. And don't say anything about the way they're shaped. <laughs> you pervert. <laughs> Sorry, but that's that's the. That's them there, and I'll let them dry. Uh, they'll be drying in a couple of days, and then um, you can either 
uh, fire them. Uh, I'll probably throw them in my test kiln or, um, you know, for, for a bit, maybe throw them in there until, uh, uh, just to make them hard enough so that the, if they fall, they won't break. Of course, they're going to they're gonna cure once they're dry and they're sticking in the, in the holes. But after I shaped them, I basically stuck them in the hole, pulled it out, and then reshaped it again, just to make sure I have the, you know, the, uh, the angle and everything right. And they will actually wedge in there pretty good, and this stuff is, uh, sandable afterwards if you're, you know, wear a res respirator. You can sand it down a little bit too. You can get a, actually a perfect fit if you wanted. But, uh, I'm babbling again. I'm sick. <laughs> Need to go to bed. But I'm down here messing around, so. I guess that's about it. And, uh, well, I did, I made another batch. I got five more. One more slab. And uh, managed to trim the rest of my stuff. Turn, uh, turn the pots. They're actually upside down now. Turn the bottoms. And uh, you actually won't see any of this anyway. But I just wanted to practice turning. So. Okay. Take it easy. We'll see you.